Welcome to the Workplace and Apprenticeship 30 Geometry Unit. Today we'll be asking the question, how can we use numbers and symbols to represent space and shapes? We'll look at the dodecahedron which has 12 sides, 30 edges, and 20 vertices. First, we'll discuss the limitations of measuring instruments as a brief recap from last unit. Then we'll consider the historical significance of the dodecahedron. And finally, we'll look at the mathematical properties, reasoning, and computations involved in building this amazing object. How exact do our measurements really need to be? When we built the dodecahedron, it was important that we were very accurate with our measurements. Accuracy is the difference between the measurement reading and the true value of the measurement. Whereas the precision of a measuring instrument is determined by the smallest unit that it can measure, the table saw blade can be moved in one degree increments, whereas our digital protractor shows up to one hundredth of a degree. The range of error we'd allow, also known as the tolerance, was between 116 and 5 tenths of a degree and 116 and 7 tenths of a degree. No measurement is exact because the outcome of the measurement depends on a number of things. The skill of the operator, the environment, the measuring system, procedure and tools, material and other factors. We show it in mathematics as error as it is the potential difference between the resulting measurement and the true value of what is being measured. We also call this uncertainty. Our tools, knowledge, and procedures can sometimes limit us. It is up to us to look for the right tools for the specific job and use the tools properly to make accurate measurements and cuts. Mathematical concepts build over time. Consider for a moment, what would our world be like today without the dodecahedron? What if ancient civilizations hadn't created drawings, models, and incredible buildings like the pyramids? What if Plato hadn't drawn on ideas from the Pythagoreans, Empedocles, or Theotetus? What if Euclid hadn't proved Plato's mathematical theories? Where would we be without Archimedes, Muslim, and Chinese mathematicians? Perhaps Renaissance mathematicians would not exist. Maybe elliptical planetary orbit and the laws of gravity wouldn't have been discovered. Let's look at the face of a dodecahedron, which is a regular pentagon. Regular polygons must have congruent sides and congruent angles. To calculate one interior angle, I broke the pentagon up into three triangles and then divided that by five which is the total number of angles. For the central angle, I imagined a circle broken up into five equal segments. To calculate the angle between two planes, which is what we cut our pieces to, I could think back to my university calculus and consider how the law of cosines relates to the spherical law of cosines. But rather than bore you with all of that, for now, I'll let you know it is important to know when to use sine, cosine, or tangent. And always show your work. In my computation, I used a trig identity to help me simplify, and I used my calculator to get a final answer. I simplified to the same precision that our protractor shows. But how do we cut three pieces to fit perfectly together at the vertex? I imagined a cube inside of the dodecahedron. Each edge deviated 36 degrees from either the X, Y, or Z axis. Using these specific measurements, our dodecahedron rotates evenly on each face. And it's by far the coolest thing I ever helped build. So how can we use numbers and symbols to represent space and shapes? Well, with woodworking, we need to know how to measure properly. And we need some basic mathematical understandings like the properties of geometric figures and trigonometry. 